Hi, welcome back to our Channel Mum playlist. We are JK and Charlie, we're couple vloggers. Um, we vlog with our baby boy, Noah. Um, we've been vlogging with Channel Mum for a while now and normally our videos are fairly lighthearted because I think that's the kind of people we are. But we thought it might be about time to actually talk about something um, quite real and quite serious that happened to us um, on our journey to becoming parents because it might be something you're going through right now or you may have been through or may go through in the future and we think it's something that should be talked about. Um, I have blogged about it quite a lot on my blog but we've never done a video on it have we? No. And uh, what we're talking about is miscarriage and fertility issues and all, all the things that we had to go through in order to have our beautiful baby boy Noah. Very potted history because I think this is one for another vlog because it's so long. We had two missed miscarriages um, so we lost two babies before we got our beautiful boy and had spells of infertility and all sorts of stress and operations and things like that. Quite a difficult journey to get to where we are today um, but I'm going to stop rambling now because the, the, the purpose of this video is um, I think women talk about miscarriage and women read about other women's experiences. I think sometimes we don't really know what our partners go through and I think that's something I was guilty of thinking about my own feelings way too much when we were going through it because men have miscarriages too. Mm. Um, so really what I wanted to do in this video, if you don't mind, is kind of ask you how you felt because I know how I felt um, particularly our first miscarriage it wasn't found out until um, our 12 week scan so we went along to our 12 week scan thinking we were going to see this beautiful baby and we were all hyped up weren't we mm. um, had absolutely no no indications or signs that our baby had died you know inside me a few weeks previously um, I know that my world fell apart in that room at that time and I don't think I've ever really asked you how you felt so I don't know how how did you feel um how do you feel uh it's a real difficult one because I think you know guys that have that have gone through this with their their partners their wives um you my instant thought is absolutely yes that you know that my world totally collapsed but my instinct is to protect you and my feelings were how can i make this better how can i make this right how can i make you feel less pain and i think that's a that's a guy thing that's a yeah, natural guy yeah. thing that you just want to protect you know your partner how can i make this just you know a tiny bit better um and i think that I'd put my feelings aside to try and concentrate on on your feelings. Now it's fair to say that you know I'm I'm not too hot when it comes to my emotions. I'm not, you know, they're not really on the outside. You have to dig pretty deep to get them. But I think in this sort of situation you have to dig deep and I think like I said, you know, um it it, it sounds harsh but I wasn't carrying our child. You know, I didn't have those feelings. You had those feelings and you know, it's just I can't even comprehend what it was like to to have you know something so precious inside you and and all of a sudden for that heartbeat to stop and for our child to you know to to not be you know alive to not be around and I think you just go into instant protection mode and try and make things better because do you remember quite a lot of the time um I think I gave you quite a hard time after 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 both of them actually because I felt like that you didn't you weren't grieving as much as I was grieving and I, I sort of needed you to grieve as well because you were the only other person in this with me. Mm. And I know you just kept saying, you know, my job is to look after you. And I, I used to get so cross with you because I, I wanted to see you cry or to smash something up or, because that's what I was doing, wasn't I? Mm. I, I was, I, I went through all the stages of grief. I think you do when you lose a baby, you go through anger, you go through hate, you go through sadness, you go through blaming yourself. But with you, I kind of wasn't seeing that process happening. And so there was a few times I thought you just didn't care as much. I think I, I knew deep down you did. Yeah. But I, I needed to see something from you. Do you get why I sort no, of needed that? No, I do get that. But also there is, there's a real fine line of, of trying to deal with the current situation and there's also a fine line to try and make sure that we we focus on the future but not forgetting our past so you know of course we we have you know two little babies 
you know, up there somewhere, you know, whatever you believe in. But also I knew that we had to keep going. We had to look at our future. We had to, to try and get, you know, our miracle child. And eventually we, we did. And sometimes I think, you know, you may seem that as that might seem a bit harsh. I don't know, you know, if, if you think that. But for me, it was all about keeping your mind on the future and trying to be positive, but not forgetting, you know, our babies. It's it's a real, real difficult situation. Mm. And also, when there are hormones flying everywhere and there's sadness and there's grief, to try and get that right, I think genuinely is impossible you know you, you might be a dad out there and you got it spot on I'll take my hat off to you but I don't think I did no no you did it's just I think talking about it is quite interesting because I think a lot of people will, will be going through all these emotions and stuff I think what you did um looking back is actually lovely um your instant reaction after both times so I had to go into hospital and have um a procedure to remove the pregnancy both times, um, which in itself is stressful, having an operation, your way of dealing with it was to make sure I had all the food I needed, all the drink I needed, the medication Hand I together. needed. Yeah, <laughs> you went primal into, instinct. Yeah, you went into yeah. protection mode, didn't you? And but also remember, make sure I had my ibuprofen, all that sort of stuff, rather yeah. than the kind of like, I just needed to lie on the floor and cry till I couldn't cry anymore. But there's, you know, there's a, there's a theme throughout this which is us guys apart from the emotional side we don't have to go through you know what you have to go through and that is you know having a child you know having missed miscarriages having an operation to you know remove our baby we we will never go through that we have no comprehension of, of what that you know what that feeling is so we just have to try and protect you in any way that that we can but not knowing truly how how that feels. Joe, the first time, and it was quite recent, that I actually felt that you had listened to my crazy emotions about the whole thing was when you gave me this necklace at Christmas. Oh, yeah. Um, so I've got this necklace on now. I thought I'd wear it for this piece. Um, Jay gave it to me. Would well, you want to explain it? No, no, you go. You go. It's basically three hearts because I was at, at Christmas, last Christmas, I was carrying our son Noah and I was quite heavily pregnant and you gave me this necklace three hearts, um, two heart. I don't want to start crying. This is the point I'll probably start crying. It's loud, um, it's okay. Um, two hearts to represent our, our babies that we lost and one to represent Noah. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that was a big thing for you, a big gesture. Yeah. Um, you thought about that though. Yeah, no, you? I did. I did. You know, it's, it's a typical guy thing here, just going, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> that make you feel awkward. No, no, it's not making me feel awkward. You know, at that time, that's what I thought. And it just, yeah, like you said, I think for you, it just, you now know that I was always thinking about it. And it took, you know, just a necklace to, to do that. And what can be just a piece of jewellery, but actually has meaning, it has sentiment. And if that's, you know, of value to you and, and you really appreciated that, then I did something right. You did a lot right. For once. <laughs> so just maybe to sort of wrap this up, um, what would be perhaps your one bit of advice for a man maybe, or a woman going through this who's struggling with, with her partner? I think just try and... It's, it's try and get into your partner's head, which I think we do... With, with everything in life um but try and think ahead try and and imagine what your partner's going through um but also yeah don't you know you're going through stuff as well it's you know there there are two people in this relationship and i think i will always still say protect and just try and make things better in whatever way you can in your relationship but you need to look after yourselves as well like I wanted you to go and talk to a friend or a family member or something, and you didn't. I think often men close down. I think it's important for the woman, although you're going through so much pain, to sort of keep an eye on on your man as well to make sure that they're okay. Do you think that's good advice? Yeah, yeah. We're okay. <laughs> to be so awkward. <laughs> I, don't know. I do feel quite awkward actually. Can, can we wrap it up there? <laughs> so he's talking about your emotions. Men can't do it. Oh look, look, and you're going to now dig deeper and deeper no, and deeper. Not. Okay. <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> Why are you so awkward?